All right, we're gonna try this Facebook Live thing again here. And today, as we're doing two strokes, we got into some stuff that uh, can be pretty confusing for a lot of techs uh, when you're first starting off. And, and a huge part of being successful as a mechanic is organization. And you gotta kind of find a balancing act between how much time you're gonna put into things. And so a lot of times you've got where, you know, all the nuts and bolts have just been thrown in here and you're trying to figure out, well, where do all these go? And what would be worse is if you just had a box with all of this, these are the right side components, we'd have a couple more. And if you don't have some separation, you just throw everything in one bag, you gotta figure out how you're gonna put it together. Well, one of the things we, we wanna do, we grab his Honda Common Manual too. One of the things we wanna do is take advantage of some, uh, every mechanic should know this material, and that is, when a fastener, as I set this on here, it won't stay flat because there's a dowel pin, but every fastener in a, within a cover will 99.9999% of the time always have the same height, exposed height, before you thread it in. So Ben here's grabbing the Honda Common Manual. I'm going to show you that right out of their basic manual that's meant to be the basic information for all other manuals are based on. If you can find that page there in the general information. And while he's doing that, you could see here as I go along here that these are all the same height. Well, if you take and you drop these bolts in and you have, you know, one that let's say is down a little bit. Let's flip this up. Let's say I got one that's, they're all like this, but this one to the right here is flush. You know you have too short a bolt. And if you only got a couple threads and you try putting that in and torquing it, you are going to have a crappy day. That's going to suck. But let me show you my favorite way of doing it right after I show you the Honda Common information. If you're turning wrenches and you don't own this book or you haven't read this book, I cannot stress it enough. They have a, a newer version out a few years ago. There's a... Uh, 1988 version that uh, I think 88 until 2012 was the first time they updated it. That's how common it is. But you can apply this to anything. Suzuki, Yamaha, you name it. Inside this book, just tons of everyday information about snap rings, bearing, insulation. But here is their tip on bolts. And so when, they, when you read it, it just says ensure that they're all the same height. So in the case here, this obviously is sticking out way too far and that is not correct. Well, what it doesn't show here is what, what's it look like when one is too short. And that's where most people fail. This one that's way too long, when you push that in, it's going to bottom out. And it's going to be so far from kissing the surface that you're not, you're going to catch it more than likely and go, whoa, something's not right here. But man, when they're too short and a newer tech's just grabbing onto like just a couple of threads, you are going to start stripping uh, threads in the case or whatnot and you're going to have a bad day. So let me show you my favorite way to do this and Ben can you help me out can you sure. just hold that up and try to get some contrast back there instead of instead of using put some, uh, there you go perfect right there instead of using the height from above what I like to do is just grab my baggie my cover all my bolts and just start dropping them in where I think they see to fit best and you can see here that all of these have the same exposed length sticking out that's a nice way to do it so if I had one in here like this, oh, something's wrong that's way too long for this cover and that's not gonna work, okay? So there's your tip on that. So let's talk about another tip. That's without using a manual, that's without looking it up. What I highly suggest you do when you're going to put an engine together cover is print the microfiche. So here I've just blown these up so that you guys can see them better. And then identify what you're working with. So you could see those bolts that we were all just uh, showing you in the demonstration. That's these number sevens. Okay, and you can see how they go around here. This number 10 means it's a different bolt. So if we look at this cover, and it's really important to put, lay the part like it is in the photo. And as I see here, this number 10 goes here. We'll look at the long distance it has to travel to attach that engine case. Of course, it's a lot longer bolt than number seven. So what you could do in your baggie is count out how many number sevens you have, one, two, three, four, five, so and so on, and then just check these off, making sure where you can go, okay, yep, I got that one, I got that one, I got that one, I got that one, and so on, as just a way to have a checklist that you have all the fasteners that you should. Got it? Here's the one I want to make a big deal about, and this is the main purpose of this 
little video or lesson that I'm doing for the students here is that there is way too much assumption a lot of times in taking these bolts. And as you just look at these real quick here, and I'm going to throw them out on the table here. If I just throw these like this, honestly, would you say that you have three of one size and three of another? Yep. Ben, what do you think? Looks like it. It looks like it, doesn't it? Here's what I do that is super important to verify what you have going on. Check this out. So lay all your fasteners out. And now what you notice is you notice one's longer than the other. And it's just barely longer. It's not, it's like five millimeter. Okay, I could measure from here to here and find out its length. Normally I can go to the parts fish and I can look up the required bolt and it'll tell me like this one, the six by 100 means it's six millimeter diameter, 100 millimeter long. But for all the ones we need of our clutch cover here, so we've got seven, what do we got here? Seven, eight, seven, eight, seven, or excuse me, seven, and then nine. We have one different part number. Even though they don't give us the length, aren't you going to bet as we flip this over, we'll just go ahead and get this in the right position here. So this is how this would go on. Let's go ahead. We're going to take that oddball one, that number nine. We're going to drop it through there. Where's our uh, eights go? Here and here. You aren't going to be able to see these through, but you'll be able to see the exposed tops here. Okay? Look at what we got going on. We've got that height, that height. This is that really long one. Okay? We've got this height, and then we've got this really, really, really long one, okay? Ben, lift that cover up for me. Just the whole cover, all two pieces. Now, as he does that, can you see how there's a lot, a lot of exposed thread here? I really do not believe that this bolt is correct. It could be. It, it very well may be. But the only way that I'm going to know at this point, since they don't give me any dimensions on this, the service manual doesn't give a dimension to, is I'm feeling great about all of these. Now with these really long ones in, do you see how it's the same exposed length there? So what I would do for this one oddball fastener, just to be safe, is I would go ahead and I would just order this part number nine. It's stupid cheap insurance to make sure you're getting the right bolt. I mean you got to realize here that people actually people risk little things like this all the time and they don't think it's a big deal and they think they just grab bolts out of a bolt bin because maybe they're you know putting together something where it wasn't organized real well or it was lost or whatever and take that risk and think oh that's close enough and we don't like that term around here about good enough or close enough because it's pretty simple. I mean, for me to go spend, you know, two bucks on a bolt, you know, to get a Suzuki bolt in this case, and then 100% know I'm right, uh, I don't have to have that risk and I don't have to worry about it. You know, if I get this bolt and I do find out that this one, for whatever reason, that they want a lot more thread contact on this, it also, as a, as a technician, makes me go, hmm, Suzuki did that, and I might recognize that when I work on other Suzuki product or whatever you're dealing with. But that is my tip of the day uh, that we were working on here in the lab with students of using all your resources so that you can get this stuff together right. And this is pretty stinking cool to be able to see that those have about all that same exposed uh, thread. And by the way, we've taken the time to measure this on numerous engines. And so, like I said, most of the time you're just going off the top here. That is between 400 thousandths and 500 thousandths, or roughly about a half inch. If you ever have less than that, question it. Stop. Figure out what they say should be in there. If you have seven of a bolt, order one of them, or just go pick up one from the dealer and verify that you know you have the right length bolts. I can't think of any time I've seen less than 400 thousandths of an inch. That's it. Keep wrenching. We had a great day here in the lab, having a lot of fun using our training aids and resources. So uh, we'll see you next time.